Yes, in the series of fusion, I use half for the heat and she just use the other half for the salad. No, you need another one. Uh, could you have Sherry come up, please? Sherry. Yeah. She said I have to let these people in. I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Could you, yes, could you go get Sherry, please? Can you hear me, um, Lisa? I can, yep. Yeah. Can you tell I'm frustrated? It, 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 you know what? If you're not used to this kind of stuff, which I'm not, I totally get it. <laughs> Apparently, Katie's there, but I don't see her or hear her or anything. Well, she is muted, and I do know that much because she sees the little red microphone. That means her yeah. she's muted. Um, and then maybe she's just not joining. There she goes now, so. Well, it was. Um, I had an email. I, you said I have to let them in or something. There's Katie. She must have thought I was just having a hard time. Hi, John. Sorry, I've been having internet issues at home trying to start the meeting. Are you on Comcast? I, yes, we are. You pay a lot of money for your instability. I do. We pay $40 a month for my instability. I have Verizon DSL. Oh, 40 is a lot better deal for some instability. <laughs> I think I'm like at 140 for mine. We may have. Um, I got an email from Astrid at our first interview at 6.45 and apologized to her that we were supposed to start at 6.30. So this, may, this meeting may be a flop. We may have to reschedule it for next week or some other time. Whatever you guys want to do. Um, well, I, I don't know. I don't know where they are. Um, well, it might have been they didn't get the email too. If they don't like chronic, if they don't constantly check it, I tend to constantly check my email. That might be. No, I, I got an email from uh, Keith and he, uh, at, at quarter to seven. He said you and he were waiting in Zoom. Yeah. So I know. I know Keith was waiting, and I know Shirley <laughs> Phillips. I've seen Shirley Phillips. Uh, attending a uh, town council meeting and she has her tie, saw her in her tile. So um, we need one more member of the committee to be a quorum. I just replied all to your email that it was tech issues and the meeting's been started. So maybe someone will see that and jump on. Yeah. Meantime, my hamburgers are done. <laughs> well, you can feel free to eat, eat in front of me. I don't care. It's all good. I, mean, I actually had them shut their lights off behind me which is the kitchen where everything was being prepared. No, no, no I'm just kidding. We'll eat, we'll eat when I'm done. Okay, I think Keith might be coming on now. He just texted me. But my daughter said I had to let people in. Yep, so you're the whole, um, a little thing that pops up that says someone's in the waiting room. He's on, Keith's on his way now, he said. Do I need my daughter to help me with this as far as letting people in? Um, it should. So do you have a little thing at the bottom that says um, participants? Yeah. It's if you click waiting. that, a little thing will pop up on the side and it'll just show you when someone's in the waiting room and a notification will pop up at the top that says someone's in the waiting room and you'll just hit admit. Sorry, you're talking too fast. I'm sorry. Um, so click participants. Yeah. And does it give you like a white bar? Oh, okay, the, uh, I have a blue box that says admit. Oh, yep, yeah, press that. Now I'm all cleaned yep. up. Yep, so whenever that pops up, you're just going to keep admitting people to the meeting and you should be all set. Yeah, um, we are we are totally flummoxed here. We've got, we have a quorum of committee members 
so we can have a brief meeting, but we don't have any uh, applicants because I've been back and forth trying to keep them informed that nothing happened at 625. Katie, I guess you uh, you must have forgotten that it was a 6.30 meeting. No, no, you said you had internet issues. I'm sorry. Yeah, I haven't been able to get my internet up for a little bit. Uh, Keith, I was just telling Katie that I pay $40 a month for internet instability because I have Verizon DSL. Mm. Uh, a lot of other people in town apparently pay over $100 for internet instability with Comcast. We Can do. No, I, I can hear you and Katie can. Keith, can you hear him? It's a little bit muffled, but I can hear him. Slightly mm -hmm. muffled. How much do you pay a month for internet instability? How much do I pay? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I put the money into the account to grow and my son take it out. That's our arrangement. So probably more than forty dollars a month. I live close enough to downtown that DSO works fine for us. I'm with you, Katie. I have Comcast. <laughs> yep, and they keep going up every time I get the bill. It's like ten dollars higher. I'm like, yeah. I don't understand it's, my yeah, service. I know. We, we have Comcast yeah, too. Exactly. We have Comcast yeah. everything. Um, the, you know, our first asteroid. I thought maybe maybe asteroid would. Uh, I, I may have set the tone that. We're going to have to reschedule this thing with my last email with everybody. So we'll just give a couple more minutes to see if I don't have their well, I have their phone numbers, but I I don't know what to do. Well, the, the the email did go out from you. I'm assuming Katie from you. I do have an email saying that it's open now, so they should have got the same one. But oh, okay. in the meantime, uh, welcome to the committee, uh, Lisa. Thank you. It's good to have you aboard. Um, typically, you gotta I talk about your outfit. outfit. Oh, Say again, yeah, Keith, uh, uh, we have the Bruins. We have standards here on this committee. John it, runs that. Day. Yeah, I actually had to get dressed today. I mean, See, to I didn't it. even, I didn't even wear it for you. I forgot. See, but I got my, you know, the whole good thing going. Huh? We even have socks on today. <laughs> um, Lisa, I typically have uh, the application out in front of me and. Uh, copy of the, uh, the from the from the, the town code I, I make a copy of the responsibilities of the committee or that the person is applying for and I if they haven't looked at it I give it to them and I let them read it and make sure they understand what you know what they're what they're getting into on a volunteer basis. Um, and then we um, we kind of explain the process you know, that after the interview we vote on whether to not recommend or not the person for appointment. And then there's a form that we fill out that I circulate before I send it to the town manager. Uh, I've hung on to that responsibility as far as filling the form out. It's the recommendation form. Peter Collin Botus several years ago thought that things were a little too, you know, what's that big word for just not organized enough as far as the appointment process, even though uh, the prior chair, Gail Venuti, would send an email to the town manager saying we met with the person and here's what we thought and we voted and all that. Peter, uh, to his credit, uh, created or had help creating a recommendation form that we use now. And they, the, the town council members expect that form to be in front of them when, if we vote to recommend and then the town manager agrees, he then sends a package of information to the town council members the night, for the night that that person's going to be on the town council agenda for ratification. Uh, and the only committee in town that doesn't need town council ratification for its appointment is us. It's very specific in the town code that the town manager doesn't need town council ratification to appoint members to the city advisory committee. Um, so that's, that's where we are. Um, and um, we also tell the person that, you know, the next step after the interview for them is they they can keep an eye on town council agendas to see if their name comes up under, I think it's item D every, you know, there's a standard item on the agenda of every town council appointments, either letter D or letter E. And uh, 
they can wait to see if their name is there and they can watch the excitement that night of, of being appointed. Or they can just wait for the letter from the town manager that says, congratulations, you've been appointed and you need to go see the town clerk to get sworn in. And we, we explain that to every, every applicant that comes through because almost all of them are, are, are new to the process. Um, and I, I don't, it looks like um, the, uh, the other applicant besides Astrid Rojas, she was applying for, she had put in planning board, but I went back to her, you saw in my emails that um, the only C open right now is the associate member and it's a one year term. And they only really do anything if they're short a person for a forum or a couple of other things. Um, okay, thanks, Katie. <laughs> I just got a pop up that said she's going to have, go have dinner. <laughs> Sorry, I got kicked out again, so I'm just going to give up, and you guys should be good to go. If you need me to reschedule, let me know. I'm happy to do it. Yeah, well, neither, neither, um, we have, we have a quorum, so if we have either person, one was scheduled at 6.45 and one at 7. They're not here, and it's probably because of what was happening, and that's okay. Um, yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll go out and get another common date that everybody's available. Our tradition, Lisa, has been for years now, it's been the first and third Mondays as needed at 6.30. Um, lately, we haven't met since January because of between January and March 13th, there wasn't any application that come, had come through. There was no need to meet. So, but our, our long-standing tradition is first and third Mondays as needed. So I'll shoot for a first or third Monday in, in the near future with everybody to get uh, agreement on a meeting time. And I'll work with Katie again to, I guess we'll have to go through the same process, Katie. There's no- yeah, just um, let me know when you want to do it and I'll give you a Zoom link and you yeah, should be no good way to go. Around the, there's no way around having to have you involved. I mean, that's the normal saying because you're, you know, you're, this is not your normal work hours. So. No, it's it's fine. It's there. We were trying to come up with a way to do it without it, but we have to record it because of yeah. the new open meeting law, and we have to record it to our cloud to go to YouTube. Yeah. And if someone else uses a private Zoom, it doesn't go to our cloud. And then I don't know. Apparently, <laughs> it's a whole thing. IT tells me. Uses, yeah, my daughter hosts Zoom meetings all the time. She's a school adjustment counselor. And she said, why do you have to record it? I go, it's the open meeting room. You know, you're not, when you're counseling a second grader with his mother on, on Zoom, you're not under the open meeting law. <laughs> she understood. All right, so, um, okay, Katie, thank you. Um, Lisa, uh, as Thanks, the Katie. Member, as the Hi, guys. Member, okay, night, Katie, thank right. you. As the newest member of the committee, do you have any other, do you have any questions about the work of the committee at this point? Um, I mean, it sounds simple enough um, and Keith kind of filled me in. I'm sure a lot of it will be as I go, I'll understand more. But essentially it just seems as if, if anybody is applying for some kind of volunteer position, they go through this committee first to kind of, you know, be questioned and, and get a recommendation. Yeah, and, and the it's town it's manager it's has the final approval. It's a, it's a vetting process, um, you know, this, we're over 125 applicants now since I've been doing this for eight years now. And uh, I've got records of over 125 people that have come through the process. Some of them have come and gone and been replaced. So, you know, it's, there's only about 125 positions on all, all 25 or 26 committees. There's only 125 positions because a lot of them were cut back like the Conservation Commission as part of the new town code and charter and everything, the Conservation Commission was cut back from nine members to five. Was that to make sure that they were all filled? Yeah, because it's hard, getting harder and harder. It's, it's out there in industry with, with uh, professional societies everywhere. People aren't, people aren't joining. It's, it's not something that the newer generations are very fond of. Um, so yeah, it's harder to fill all the seats. Uh, we have the same churches are suffering the same thing with their committee you know the board of deacons. yeah it's it's like that across the board and everything yeah, you know. so um there was a nine member golf commission that that was in charge of uh, policies and whatnot for the old scotland links and they were eliminated and wow. built into built in as a subcommittee of two or three on the parks and recreation commission 
which is only five now. So the town manager did a lot of consolidating in that regard. So, um, and you know, most of the most of the um, applicants that have come through, as Pete can attest to, now he's been on the committee long enough. Sometimes an application will come through and say, "This person is a perfect fit. Why do they want to do this? Why do they want to do this at night for nothing if they do it all day for you know, for pay?" Like for the planning board, you get a, a master's degree in urban planning come through. Perfect fit. Right? And you have to, you, know, you kid about it. You say, why would you want to do this at night for nothing? You just did it all day in Boston. But it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a satisfying spirit and environment in the meeting room when you realize there's a lot of people in town who are willing to give their time on it, like yourself, on a volunteer basis. Um, and, and then there's the other extreme, which was represented by tonight, which is fascinating also. Astrid Rojas, she does a lot of stuff, different things at Meditech. She's been at Meditech 13 years. I know a little bit about Meditech because my son-in-law, who's cooking the hamburgers right now, has been with him for six years now, over in Foxborough. And he knows, he knows the lady, uh, just by name. And um, she has no expertise at all and anything to do with planning boards, as far as I know, that's not a negative. It's just you know, she's decided she lives down at Waterford. She uh, she's decided. You saw her application. She she thinks there's some problems that she can help solve, and she's a problem solver, so that's great. And uh, and, you, and you'd rather have somebody, you know, I'd rather see somebody venture into something they have no clue about and try to be a part of the solution than just complaining on Facebook and being a problem. We, we always want to make sure we tell them, you know, you're going to be on a steep learning curve. In, you know, you can say things like, I bet you don't even know what a form, form A lot is. Uh, you know, that, and that's not a negative, sir or ma'am, but you're going to be on a big learning curve because if you don't know what a form A lot is yet, it's one of the first things you're going to learn. Do you know what a form A lot is, Lisa? Um, I, I do not. <laughs> it's a house lot that's already on an existing street. Oh, okay. So it's a very simple process. You don't need uh, utilities to go in. You don't need this. You may need a curb cut for a driveway, but as long as it meets the uh, the uh, minimum you know, size lot requirement for that area of the zone of the residential and ABC or whatever, that would be no why I would not I would not volunteer to be on a planning board because I would be like you know out of my <laughs> own. Yeah, you know, so you take somebody like tonight's applicant, and that's you know that's a steep learning curve. Because if it's not a form A lot, then it's a subdivision, and there's a 14-page subdivision bylaw. You know, two sidewalks and this and that, and minimum radius on the curves and drainage and everything. Uh, so it's it's a definitely a steep learning curve. And uh, the other applicant, his whole resume is uh, very important stuff out there in the world today, cybersecurity. But he starts off by saying he's an outdoorsman, so he, he wants to serve on the conservation commission. Sounds like a match to me. We just want to make sure that there isn't any agenda, that, you know, any kind of a hidden agenda. Right. And, and that's, the big, that's the big thing. 20, 20 out of 25 applicants will be slam dunk. Right. And you may go say to yourself, why are we even taking the time to do this? But you catch that one person. I don't, you know, for example, this Astrid guy didn't send his resume. I think he just sent his application. And when somebody starts out immediately saying, you know, I think there's a lot of problems with the town, it always catches my eye. Yeah, and, and as a result of the interview, you know, we would be discussing the overall situation and we will do that next time around. Um, I think it might be a bit of a second language kind of thing you know, in, in that case. But as long as we catch that one person or John once <laughs> caught two relatives trying to be on the same board at the same time yeah, and as long as we get even if 99 are slam dunks if we catch that one that isn't a slam dunk that's what we're here for so you I mean, find that people actually lie to try and get on these committees for they didn't lie yeah. they just didn't tell the truth yeah okay well I got, I so it was by omission there's nobody else listening right now they can I mean if they come in i'll stop talking but uh, i got i got snookered once and i'm not going to get snookered again guy down on south street applied to be on the um Conservation Commission, and I checked them out as best I could on my own, um, all within, you know, good guidelines. 
Mm -hmm. And I, I spoke to Harry Bailey, who's on the Conservation Commission, and I said, do you know this guy? I don't, never heard of him. As far as you know, he's never had any uh, rough dealings with the cons your cons our Conservation Commission uh, or anything, right? It turns out he had, an, you know, he got appointed. He, he interviewed, he interviewed Clean. <laughs> we go down South Street now, and up behind his house, there's two retreat lots that Milton Ross put in. That's that's what he did. We didn't we didn't find it out. We didn't discover it. He snooped me. <laughs> um, well, I don't think you can blame yourself. I mean, you can only do so much and hope right, that you right. can so, catch. Yeah, I'm a volunteer too. Right? So he resigned after about a year, and he's on Facebook every so often calling the Conservation Commission for us. And, you know, there's that. But like he says, 99% of the time, uh, everything's good, and and it's a sincere, yeah. honest desire to give back to the community in, in one way in one way or another um any other questions all right i'm going to get out of here i gotta uh yeah. i gotta yeah, get some stuff I'm, done i'm within six feet of my hamburger here Carol, all right so we can Carol. probably probably call it a night um i was nice to meet you john i've known keith for a while and just let me know when the next one is and yeah. hopefully we'll get as you see I, I do a pretty good job of keeping everybody advised of everything so uh, I do expect we won't see Mike Clarity on Zoom. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's beneath him. Ah. <laughs> All right. Well, it was nice meeting you. Okay. Right. I'm going to see you, John. I'm gonna I think I'll be talking to you. out or whatever I do here. Bye, thanks. Keith. Have a good have, Enjoy your burgers, John. I'll be in touch with you guys all. All right. Thanks. thanks. Yeah. Bye.